In 7 News, the flood inquiry finds Wyvernhoe Dam operators didn't release water when they should have. Three engineers referred to the CMC over the accuracy of their reports. Full coverage as the flood report findings paved the way for mass compensation claims. Campbell Newman cleared by the corruption watchdog over dealings with developers. A major search for a woman missing in Springbrook National Park. And Logan councillor Heinel Black storms out of court, sparking another warrant for her arrest. Tonight, the CMC clears Campbell Newman of any wrongdoing over developer deals. The flood inquiry singles out Wyvernhoe Dam engineers for blame, finding they've breached their manual. A damning flood report opens the way for mass compensation claims. And a mystery in Springbrook National Park, grave fears for a woman's safety. This is 7 News with Rod Young and Kay McGrath. Good evening. Campbell Newman won't be investigated by the Crime and Misconduct Commission after the corruption watchdog this afternoon completed its assessment of three separate matters. They have cleared Mr Newman of any wrongdoing in relation to deals with developers. The corruption watchdog assessed the matters involving Mr Newman and developers from his time as Lord Mayor. In a statement it said, there is currently no evidence of official misconduct on the part of Campbell Newman. This afternoon's announcement is a boost for Campbell Newman heading into the campaign's final week. A short time ago I asked Mr Newman if it cleared him of all wrongdoing. It totally clears me of any wrongdoing and it now exposes the fact that Anna Bly and Labor have completely been misleading the people of Queensland. Their campaign is built on a tissue of lies and today the whole campaign for them came crashing down. Well, you've been cleared, but developer donations to your Lord Merrill re-election campaign, they're now being investigated by the CMC. What do you make of that? Well, that's proper that they should have a look at that. But the important thing is that Anna Bly has been directing all her attacks at me personally and my family, and she's been shown to have absolutely no basis for any of those things. Even last night at the People's Forum, she was again accusing me of these things. She was wrong. She lied. And frankly, the only team that can take Queensland forward now that has a positive plan to get the state back on track is myself and the LNP. The Flood Inquiry's final report has found engineers breached the Wyvernhoe Dam manual and didn't release water when they should have in the days before Brisbane flooded. Three engineers have been referred to the Crime and Misconduct Commission over claims they deliberately misled the inquiry. More than a year after Queensland's worst natural disaster, the final report from the $15 million commission. Wyvernhoe Dam was operated in breach of the manual from 8am on 8 January 2011 until the evening of 9 January 2011. Lawyers say the findings will pave the way for the biggest class action the country's ever seen. They're confident they have a case against the state government and are urging flood victims to sign up. In Ipswich, residents and business owners were hoping for answers that could let them get on with their lives. While the report has given them some optimism, they're frustrated more wasn't done to address insurance problems. In the Lockyer Valley, the council has already met some recommendations of the final flood report, which included an early warning system. Thirteen alarm-activating gauges have been installed in waterways, with another four to be operational within weeks. Ahead in 7 News, that mysterious disappearance of a Gold Coast bushwalker. The Logan councillor who stormed out of court. And Holden's new electric car of the future. Back now with 7 News. Mystery surrounds the disappearance of a 24-year-old Gold Coast woman last seen in the Springbrook National Park more than three days ago. Reporter Amanda Abay joins us now live from our Bureau in Surface Paradise. And Amanda, we understand police are now also searching for the man who reported her missing. They are. Rod, 33-year-old Matthew Peter Kane told police he and Emily O'Brien went bushwalking on Tuesday afternoon. He made it out just before midday yesterday, phoned police, but now authorities can't find him He's either. being treated in Gold Coast Hospital as the air and ground search for Emily continues, Rod. OK, thanks. Amanda Rebate joining us live from our Bureau in Service Paradise. An arrest warrant has been issued for Logan Councillor Heinel Black for the second day in a row. She stormed from a Beanley courtroom after back-chatting a magistrate. Well, Holden has unveiled its car of the future. The Volt is touted as the most sophisticated electric vehicle ever built. And some slightly more expensive conveyances in Melbourne, Pat. 
by several million dollars. Yes, right. Hello, everyone. The F1 car has hit the street circuit. Also, another blow for the Titans. Alistair McDermott inspires his balls in the Shield Decider. And stage one successfully negotiated by the Thorpedo. Ian Thorpe has ignited Australia's Olympic swim trials. Our greatest Olympian came to Adelaide dogged by fitness and funding queries. He did his talking in the pool today. Thorpe qualified for the 200 metre semis with by far the best time of his comeback. A wretched week has become tougher for the Titans, losing strike centre Jamal Idris for tomorrow's showdown with Melbourne. As off-field dramas envelop the club, the pressure's building on the playing group, despite the coach's assurances. Big weekend of sport coming up. Got to be happy with that. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thanks, Paddy. To the market now, and Australian stocks regained earlier losses to close the day flat. The ASX 200 fell two points. Virgin dropped more than 2%, announcing its ownership restructure will go ahead. The big banks recorded a mixed day. Commonwealth suffered a loss. NAB and ANZ both gained. Locally, Billabong shaved 12 cents. Domino's Pizza and Flight Centre finished on top. And the Aussie dollar is buying 105 US cents. And tonight, with our Friday weather, here's Angie. Well, Rod, these fine conditions aren't going to last. I'll have your full weekend forecast next, as well as a look at the beaches with Liz. Hello. While we've been enjoying sunshine around the southeast, the top end of the state is being inundated with heavy rain. A monsoon trough up north has become very active with a low developing over the Northern Territory. Now that's likely to move into Queensland tonight with a chance it'll develop into a cyclone on Sunday. There is a severe weather warning out for the region with high tides and heavy falls expected anywhere north of St Lawrence. All right, now it's 25 degrees, humidity is 64%. Temperatures were fairly average today. Brisbane had 20 to 30 degrees, 30 also the top for Ipswich and Logan. Both coasts reached 29. On the satellite there's plenty of cloud across the country. Cyclone Lua off Western Australia has been upgraded to a Category 3. It's expected to cross the coast tomorrow. And there's another low attached to the monsoon trough. It's up over the Northern Territory and moving east towards Queensland. 24 hour rain totals around the Gulf will likely reach 150 millimetres. Well, if you're heading into state this weekend, Perth expecting a warm top of 34, sunny in Adelaide and showers for the other capitals. Back home to Queensland, more wet weather for the far north, a possible storm in Mackay and Mount Isa. Further south, chance of showers along the coast, 30 the top in Bundaberg and storms in the far west. Loud on the bay, expect east to southeasterly winds to 15 knots, seas around 0.7 of a metre. Now Brisbane tomorrow, there'll be a shower or two, 21 to 29 degrees. And showers the trend across the southeast, both coasts heading for 28, 24 in Toowoomba. Looking ahead now, potential for showers most days, heaviest from Sunday to Tuesday, tops will be in the high 20s. Now let's Let's check the beaches with Liz. It's a good looking weekend ahead for surfers with plenty of swell. It was a little cooler this morning but the water temperature is still incredibly warm at 26 degrees. I'll be back tomorrow with the latest on Sunday. See you then. It does all sound promising. Thanks Liz. And that's all from us this Friday. If there's a story that you think needs to be covered, head to yahoo7.com.au slash Queensland and just click on the news tip section. Enjoy your weekend. From all the team, have a very good night. Good night.